did not know what we were truly getting into. Nature to its fullest extent. When you got out to the beach and you looked back, it just looked like the jungle. Untouched, untapped. Beauty. This was only the second time that I've ever left home. I kind of told myself that I needed to do something different. I wanted to serve, I wanted to help other people. It was important for me to go there so I could do something bigger than myself. It's a very poor village. We weren't actually even allowed to go into the village. So we had to set up on the side of the road under a street light. And all of a sudden, all these like kids start emerging from every direction. Loaded each bowl up and gave each kid something to drink and some food. I met a little girl named Maria. I just held her like the whole time. I think that was probably the night for me that I realized what it was all about. When we provide healthcare, we have to take into account all aspects of their life. So it was important to see where they live, the resources they have, what conditions they're in, and how this could affect their health overall. It was definitely eye-opening because you don't think people actually live like that. The house was built in the coffee field. The younger children that we saw at the home, as soon as they can walk, they start going into the coffee bean fields to start picking. That was the most humbling experience that I've ever been a part of. I was scared <laughs> beyond all belief, but also really excited. Before Costa Rica, I never worked in a clinic like that. Having people rely on what my clinical findings are was very scary to me. This is what they've been preparing me for. Sure, the first patient walking up to us was scary. He was the calmest person ever, but he lifted his pant leg. He just had blood gushing out of his leg. He was a worker in the coffee field. He said he dropped his machete on his leg. One of the school nurses was in tears because we got through their whole school in one day, and it usually takes her at least a year. San Jose was kind of like a big city here in America. Like, there's musicians on the street, there's vendors, open bakeries, shops, butchers. Once you got out of the city, it was coffee plants and trees and rolling hills. We drove through mountains and valleys all day to get from San Jose to the coast. Five days in Pirismina. Well, we were working with ASTOP, which stands for the Association to Save the Turtles of Parismina. So not only was poaching a problem, there was a lot of just littering and recycling issues. We didn't expect to see the trash problem like we did. Parismina is a community that is so far removed from other populations. Everything that gets there basically stays there. Razors, alcohol bottles, crazy things like shoes and toothbrushes and there was just a lot of glass and plastic that was on the beach and we cleared that out so that the turtles would not get trapped or they could find a safe place to lay their eggs. A lot of the medicinal plants can be found in like rainforest areas just because they have the most biodiversity. So at Carrera National Forest, we had a tour guide named Freddie who was an expert in tropical plants. Within like the first three steps, he's already stopped and was like, all right, now this plant can be used for this, and then this plant over here can be used for this. Just plants that you would just walk by normally and you wouldn't think anything of it, but they actually all had some sort of medicinal use. And so it was really cool just to see that like, I could like walk up and just grab this plant and go home and make this treatment if I really wanted to. Los Niños was the orphanage that we went to and it was pristine to me, it was beautiful. We painted a brand new bathroom that they just built. Uh, my, my part of the service project was moving bricks, a lot of cinder blocks. We got to meet all of the girls. Spending time with the orphans was my favorite part of the trip. <laughs> I was so exhausted by the time we got to the orphanage, but as soon as those kids sat me down for Duck Duck Goose, 
or Plato Plato Gancito. <laughs> we we were in it. We were off to the races. The shoe giveaway was amazing. We gave shoes to, I believe it was around 300 kids in that school. Grab your child and sit them down and take off one of their shoes and then go match it up to another one. High five, you're done. And so then you grab another kid and do it again. By the end of the day, we were all really exhausted. I think that was probably my favorite part of the trip. The biggest impact that will remain with me is what we can and should be doing to better help our environment. Having to say goodbye was one of the hardest things I've, I've done. When we would give them like vitamins or something, to me I was thinking like, yeah, you're giving them like a 20 day supply of vitamins, but then what happens after that? There's so much more work to be done. People that you haven't seen out of class, that you've just talked to in class, are completely different in a setting like that. I really got to know my professors a lot better. It turns into a bonding experience and a learning experience. We stepped up and we made everything work. I saw them grow, but I saw myself grow as a person and as a future nurse. Just the experiences that you can draw from it definitely last longer than just looking something up. In the United States, we're very consumed with going to work, getting in a routine. They break that routine in Costa Rica. They didn't have a lot of materialistic things, and they were happy. It's human interaction that's there, and I think we need a lot more of that here. The drive to do more is, is what I'm left with. I would do it again in a heartbeat. I would do it over again a thousand times.